I got a little matchless 15 watt amp up here. I know it sounds a lot louder than that, but it really is only 15 watts. And uh, this is actually what I'm using with Peter Frampton right now. I'm using this mainly, and I have also a, a non-reverse Firebird that I got right of, was right over there about six months ago, and I, uh, w with the P90s in it. And um, that's one of the things when you do a gig. It's like being in the studio. When you're in the studio, you have a lot of uh, choices of, of, of colors to paint with sound-wise and, you know, what's going to fit the track, uh, you know, okay, so you found one thing, what's going to fit the part, you know, what's going to go with the tone of the other instruments, you know, you're kind of looking around and fishing around and trying to find things. Well, with Peter's thing, uh, I, I, just as in any gig I've ever done, I've tried to find something that was going to complement what he was play, playing tone-wise. And he is a, you know, plays humbuckers for the most part, and has a bit of a, a more dense sound. It's a, it's a, it's a little bit more uh, comp compressed, really, I guess is the word or whatever. I'm, I'm not really good with those kind of things. But uh, so I would go for a more open, sort of clear, ringing, bell-like tone, which is what I would go if I'm going to have a sound, like play on a gig, and it's going to be my sound, as far as a rhythm guitar sound, the thing I would gravitate towards the most would be something in that department. And I, uh, the way that I like to describe that is that I always like to take a little bit of Malcolm Young and Pete Townsend with me wherever I go, no matter how much other stuff you pile on top of that. But those guys, I think that Malcolm Young is a pretty devastating guitar player, and, and, and his, his guitar sound is, is really something special. And so a little bit of that, you know. Um, so let's listen to an example of that, and then I'll talk about another, another thing. But you can hear, if I turn it on. <coughs> not really like super distorted you know what I mean it's not like a lot of preamp gain and stuff um, and plus you can take your volume knob and roll it down on the and all of a sudden it's real super clean right and it's all right there you don't got to be tap dancing on a bunch of pedals and things like that so um, you know it's kind of like that um, So that's kind of where I'm coming from as far as that kind of thing goes. So it's a little bit more more open, like I said, like bell-like and clean, clean sounding, and uh, but but still distorted somewhat. But it's unforgiving, you know. You can't hide behind it, that's for sure, because it doesn't sustain forever or anything. But having said that, sometimes I like to gravitate towards something that's a little bit uh, uh, heavier, sort of Billy Gibbonsy sort of sound, uh, uh, like a more humbuckery rock and roll type tone. The P90s, I think, are great for, for this with, with the being single coils and everything. I think they're, you know, the articulation. <laughs> is all there, you know, and you can really hear that Pete Townsend, you know. Right, so so uh, the the other side of the coin would be something that's a little thicker and a little heavier. I'm switch over to this SG and I'll show you what I'm talking about there. So you can see that it's still you know where the amp is set right there, it's still pretty clear. So if you just jack a little more a little more volume in there, which is really not going to get any louder, it's just going to get a little more gain. See, so it's a little bit more like thicker sounding, I guess, is the best way to describe it, you know. Um, but still, you know, it's still not like you can still hear the notes. So, uh, so then if I want to take it even a step further, I usually just step on some kind of pedal, and most of my stuff actually is uh, stored away in Peter Frampton's locker right now, so uh, I couldn't find it. But uh, 
So, but I did bring over this, this uh, Bino Boost, this Analog Man Bino Boost, which is, they call it a treble booster, but uh, you can, it's got a couple, three settings on it, and so if I'm going to play solo, you know, usually if you're going to set your tone that kind of clean like that, you're going to try to start playing some solos, you want a little bit more sustain, a little bit something to kind of prop you up a bit. Like if you're going to bend a note, you don't want to just go, you know, and, and die out. You know, you want it to kind of hang around a little bit. And so these pedals kind of help me. I, I don't know if this is going to get completely out of control here. <laughs> So that's a little bit more gnarly than I would use like just a regular overdrive pedal, but like I said, I I'm, just kind of didn't have one, so uh, sorry about that. But I would normally use some kind of like a, a, a bit of a, a something, if it's an overdrive pedal where you've got a level and a, and a, and a volume, I, I mean and a, and a distortion, I would normally run the level way up and just kind of turn the drive on just a little bit maybe. But uh, So... Uh, so that's kind of the story about around this uh, kind of thing. I think uh, one thing that I like to uh, kind of liken it to is there's a great record by the James Gang with Joe Walsh, who's one of my favorite guitar players, called Rides Again, and there's a, a great dichotomy on that record in that Funk 49 is on there, so you get your real bell-like, sort of clangy, big, you know, Malcolm Youngy sort of uh, clear tone. And then there's a song on there called The Bomber, where it's just full balls out like Les Paul Marshall cranked up. Uh, a, a thing, maybe even with some fuzz tone, so you can kind of find sort of where both of the things that I'm kind of going after right there on that one record, and a whole lot of other things in between, you know, there are a million, you know, uh, 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 wonderful guitar tones, but as far as just like, a, you know, if we're just going to crank it up and play some rock, you know, that's kind of, I would probably do one, one or the other of these. Another thing uh, that I'd like to talk about as far as that goes too is that it's, uh, it's a very conceptual with me, and it always has been, in that I never have, uh, like, gravitated towards, I got to get the exact gear that this guy's got so I can try to sound exactly like him. It's always been more of a thing in my head that, because uh, when people say, well, it's a Rolling, it sounds like a Rolling Stones guitar tone, well, you know, what in the hell does that mean? They put out a lot of records, right, you know, and there's, and uh, even, on, like, on their big records on Sticky Fingers and Let It Bleed and stuff, those guitar sounds are all over the place, but I think that we all know in our head kind of what that's supposed to mean, right? You know, like you, you kind of have an image of that. And I think that by listening to a lot of music through the years, I've formed that, I kind of formed an image in my brain of, uh, of what I want these things to sound like. And I might say Malcolm Young, and I might say Pete Townsend, or Paul Kossoff, or, or, or whatever. And it might not sound really exactly like that or anything like that. But to me, that's kind of where I'm coming from conceptually, even though I'm not playing a Gretsch, Jet Firebird, and a, and a 100 Watt Marshall or whatever. So... Uh, that's kind of how I go about attacking that. It's a very uh, uh, emotional sort of thing thing with me. Uh, not a scientific so much, I guess. You know, I'm trying to capture a vibe, you know, with, with the tone. And, and another thing, too, is that uh, you got to understand, and everybody will say it, but it really is true, you know, that, oh, the tone is in the hands. Well, it is, but don't discount this part right here, you know, that that's a huge part of it. And some of this too. So it all, they all work together in a, in a synergy. But I think that you will find with any, any really uh, articulate stylist, stylist uh, as a guitar player, when you hear a lot of guys, you can hear them on the radio and you hear one or two notes and, and you're like, well, that's Mike Campbell playing that side part right there because it sounds like him, right? Because you know, he's making a direct connection as far as communicating with the listeners. So, uh, so that's where I'm coming from as far as the tone. 